Hello everyone and welcome back to Kira's Workshop. You saw the thumbnail and read the title of this video. Today we are making the queer country sensation and legend, Orville Peck. I've been obsessed with him for a long time. His music is really good and his look, I mean, just look at him. I've had this Ken BMR 1959 doll for a long time and as much as I like having him as part of my collection, his face is meh looking. The perfect candidate for a face-up. Okay, so you know that lately I've been starting my videos with the eyes already traced. And the reason behind this is because I prefer drawing them closer to my face. So that I'm not erasing over and over again. I know that you like watching the trial and error. But you must know that erasing the doll over and over again can leave the sealant. So here I'm tracing the brows with pastels as usual. and later draw the iris with blue pencil. After filling this clarus with white, I'm working with the beard. Drawn beard not only consists in making hair strokes, you have to give dimension to it. And no matter the hair color, the undertones of the shaved beard are always green, bluish looking. So to add the base, I'm mixing brown pastel with a hint of grey and blue. Once I'm done, I'll seal the doll and start making the hair strokes. Any beard, just like the hair, have tons of tones. For Orville's beard, I'm using three different shades of brown. Now, after I finish this step, I look at these eyes and I felt like they were not quite right. No one has ever seen Orville's face, so the eyes are crucial on this repaint. I decided to clean everything from the eyes up and redraw them. This time looking to the front. Now that I'm happy with the new eyes, I'll use black pastel to give them some shadow. With my eraser, I'll clean the excess and add the catch light. Now, time for some technical stuff. Oh, hi, Kiro. Okay, so Orville Peck has a lot of tattoos. For this, I started a new project on Photoshop with the precise height of the doll, that in this case is around 30 and 31 centimeters. Whoops, that's way too big. So let's adjust it. Much better. Later I'll add on my working space two pictures of the doll, front and side. And scale them to fit the size of my working space. And also a picture of Orville as a reference. So what I'm doing now is to add some rectangular forms where the tattoo should be. And since the working table has the scale of the doll, everything should fit perfectly. Once I'm done, I'm taking the tattoos previously drawn, or modified, and scale them to the rectangles I just made. I decided to use this method instead of freehanding them, because I want them to look perfect. So now that I've finished, I copy them on a new letter size file. I'm going to print them on a decal paper. Decal paper is a kind of temporary tattoo, but not quite. Once the design is printed, you gotta give it two or four coats of sealant for the ink to set. Why? Let me explain you. Decal paper reacts with water. The sticky part comes right off after getting soaked on warm water. 
so that's what I'm doing now. Once I cut the design of my tattoos, I put them into a container with warm water, just for a few seconds. Gently pick them up, and carefully slide them on top of the body. After that, using a Q-tip, I'm gently rubbing the tattoo so that I remove the air bubbles and excess water. The sticky part of the decal paper dries fast, so you have to act quick. And now I'm doing the same thing with the remaining tattoos. While the body is drying, I'll start working on the clothes and accessories. First, the most important part, the mask. I made this pattern with paper and cut it out of fake leather. I'll remove the mask and sew by hand the fringes. Off camera, I added a piece of leather on top to cover the stitches. Now that the tattoos are dry, I'll seal them with matte acrylic paint. If you decide to do this, I really recommend you to seal everything at the end, to avoid chipping on the future. I was extremely happy with everything, until I decided to remove the mask and <gasps> this happened. Turns out that black fabric is a complete jerk and the mask stained the vinyl. So after crying myself to sleep and some investigation, I decided to take a big risk by applying cotton pads with Clorox directly on the doll for two days. And it worked. But please do this on your own risk. Clorox is very strong and it can damage and decolorate the vinyl. Now that my rant is over, I'll continue with the clothes. For the top part, I used my Nero jacket as a base pattern, and with this I made two new ones, a tank top and a vest. I cut the vest out of the same leather that I always use, and some fringes with black fake suede. Using these hunter pants, I made a pair of very detailed jeans, and I'm obsessed with them. I lost the denim shirt on the progress. But I'm no longer size extra small anyway, so I guess I have no regrets. For the boots, I'm using these Chelsea boots that belong to my Owen doll. But they need to be cowboy boots, so... I made this other pattern to extend the boots. And cut them... Mm-hmm, you know me well. Out of fake leather. Off camera, I added some decorative stitches with the help of my sewing machine, and it's multiple options that I rarely use. And glue them on the boots. I don't have a lot of footage about the hat, but I basically molded the crown with air dry foam. and I'll use foam foam to make the brim. The brim is basically a circle, but it has to be like three times larger than the crown. So I'm tracing the center of this tape on the foam. And measure it on the doll. That, by the way, is almost fully dressed. And later, trace the crown perimeter on the brim. If you cut the whole as it is, it will be larger than the crown, so I have to adjust the perimeter to match the thickness of the crown.
Now I'll cut the hole. And glue the crown on place. And of course, to make the curve of the hat trim, I'll warm the foam with the lighter and mold it while it's soft. Now time to paint the boots and the hat black. To finish everything I made a belt. I won't even mention with what. And I'll use this charm in form of a camera as a buckle. I began this doll since December of the last year, and I'm so happy I finally got the time to finish it. I'm so happy with how it turned out. Do you have a favorite artist who you like to make as a custom doll? Let me know in the comment section. And as always, don't forget to support the workshop by liking this video. Remember that sharing is caring, subscribe if you haven't, and turn on your notifications. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next time. Kira out.